Lake Detective would like to rejoin us. You, uh, you, you put on a headset there. Kind of a weak joke you had there for the Princess K, but, but it was, uh, it was, it had a marine, uh, you know, it had a water motif. A water theme. Right. All right, LD, uh, I'm uh, anxious to ask uh, questions, uh, and this is a really good opportunity. He's never been stumped, and of course, I think what begins to develop is the idea, can he be stumped? And so people, uh, feel free to wander up. I've got uh, key rings for people who ask uh, LD questions about their lake. I want to tell you or ask you a question. All right. Having to do with water. Well, uh, now I'm hearing from people out White Bear Way that there is a growing faction of people uh -huh. worried that the lake will not recover uh -huh. as it has in the past yes. because of the uh, development of such a thorough now and complete storm sewer system. So all the rainwater that gushed into that lake 50 years ago is no longer gushing into that lake. Your thoughts? Ah, well, there's, let's say they have some points uh, that are correct and maybe some that are not correct. All right, LD. The drainage area is still the same. So they haven't robbed the lake of any water. But it's a bad drainage area. Well, there's not, it's not a very big drainage area. Right. So, anytime you lose some of that drainage area, you might lose some water and you might have some impact on lake levels. However, since they're not losing any of the drainage area, it should not have a, a long-term or have a minimal impact on so lake the, levels. So that lake will come back despite the absence, or despite the presence of storm sewers. Yes. In fact, a hundred years ago, when there were no streets or sidewalks or rooftops, right. probably less water got in the lake than it does right now because really? there's more runoff because there's more what they call impermeable surface. Impermeable surface. Rooftops, roads, Sir, sidewalks. Step up to the Garage Logic microphone. Right. See if it's on. It's live. Do you have a question for the lake detective? He's never been stumped. Is it working? Yes, it is, sir. You are? My name's Tom. Tom, go ahead, please. Sylvan Lake's original name. That would be Half Breed Lake. Now, couldn't that be that? Ladies and gentlemen, wait, wait, now stop and applause, please. I am are you kidding me? <laughs> yes, are you kidding me? Why he is ours, ladies and gentlemen. Well, everybody knew that. I, thought I, I didn't him. know that. I, I thought I had him. I thought I had him, Joe. Holy, would you like an oil change from Bobby and Steve's? <laughs> I don't know. I, I do my own oil change. Do you want a key ring? I'll do that. Yeah, come on up here. <laughs> wait a minute, I have not one more request. Okay. Holy <laughs> cow, am I impressed. If it was half breed Lake, couldn't be a a holistic spiritual thing that happened in a half breed Lake where they changed the name and they altered the whole spiritual identity of the lake. You know what? You Look at this, pal. Put some tinfoil in your head, huh? <laughs> huh? How about this? There is a stream by Shakopee that the Indians used to call... Let's, uh, uh, a good name, I hope. Yeah. The Mystery Lake of the Great Spirit. Very good, yep. And that's because there was a boiling upwelling in that stream. Yep. Mystery Lake of the Great Spirit. Turns out it's groundwater coming up. So, I think there's probably a logical explanation for this. How well. recently was that name change uh, effected? That was... Probably, it's a, is that a result of political sensitivity, no, I would imagine? This or? was done early 1900s. Really? So, when they changed it from the Mystery Lake to Boiling Spring. No, Sylvan I'm talking oh, about. Oh, Sylvan. That was probably, yes, that was probably in the probably. last... Uh, that was more recent. Right. As, as well, it might have been, right? That LD, that's Lake that's Detective, okay. who's never been stumped. Uh, uh, feel free here, uh, Cleopatra. Come one? on up here. An Andy's Grill Philly cheesesteak sandwich What's or an oil change? Does that sound good to you? <laughs> What's your name? Monique. Monique. Hello. Well, hello, Monique. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need to know, is it fair to ask a question about a lake outside of Minnesota? Well, I... You know, I feel protective of the late detective. Yeah. I have a proprietary uh, well. interest uh, in seeing him uh, never be stumped. It's up to you, sir. It's up to you. How do you feel? I feel good. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> you could be witnessing history here. Oh, he'll get it. I had a dream my whole life. I grew up in western New York on a lake, and all I want to do is meet my Prince Charming and marry him at the end of my dock. Yes. And I got my Prince Charming. Yes. And I married him at the end of my dock, 
But we had a problem. <laughs> so, uh, okay, okay, thank you. So far, so good. I really think so. So, Monique, let me get this straight. You, uh, you wanted to meet Prince Charming, marry him on the end of your dock, and you did. Yes. And this was out in western New York? Yes. All right. Now the problem for the lake detective, right? Well, I cleaned out all the weeds. So it was all nice and clear because, you know, we have a weed problem back there. They cut the weeds. Mm -hmm. But then when the weeds were all clear, there was a carp problem. Huh. We had continual... He's making notes. He's yeah. making notes. With his left hand. I see that. Continual dead carp mm -hmm. floating in. Mm -hmm. During the wedding? During the week preceding the wedding. I see. During the wedding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To the point where they actually had the public works department on it, mm -hmm. clearing them out. All right. The question is... What caused the dead card? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, but I have a question for you. Yeah? Okay. How were the weeds cleared out? Oh, that's important. By me and my hands. By you <laughs> hand pull them. So there was but no... The, they no... were, they cut them. Okay. They, we, have a, we have cutters. All right. That's good. And so they, yeah. And they were... probably weren't herbicided then. No. So, okay, no. here's probably what happened. Okay. Because you cleared out the area of, of plants. See, this, I actually did this. I have the same story for a uh, uh -huh. fella in New in Chicago. Yep. Unbelievable. Big it's city, unbelievable. big states. Same thing happened. He had a wedding, his daughter, he, he, um, anyway. So, here's what happened. You clear out all the weeds, and now there is a carp infection. There's a bacterial infection that can happen with carp. The carp keel over. Where are they going to drift to? They're not going to drift into a weed patch. They'll drift into the area that's now open. You created, you created the opening, and that's where the fish, they just accumulated there. You're off the hook. You did not actually kill them. Monique, you brought about your own carp infestation. <laughs> <laughs> where in New York? It's called Chautauqua Lake. Chautauqua Lake? Yeah, it's not a finger lake. No, it's, it's not a finger. No. Is it in the uh, Adirondacks? No, it's... it's it's about um, 80 miles from Buffalo. How big a lake? 22 miles long, one to three miles wide. Oh, oh boy, that's a lake. It's that's like uh, that Otsego. What's the one at Cooperstown? Otsego. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you, Monique. Thank you. Would you like a key ring? Yes, please. All right, come on up here. Garage Logic will be back shortly. Thank you. Oh, right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. AM 1500, KSTP. Meet Dave.